unto the Lord. Witness in my heart that he lives. I'm standing on the right side. 
you are the way maker. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. You are the mighty God. You are. Yes, you are. Hallelujah. Yes, you are. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God. The great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let somebody shout hallelujah. this evening to study your word we bless you because the scripture says search ye the scriptures for in them ye have eternal life and they are they that testify of me we bless you because of their protection your covering over our lives and our families at this very challenging time in our national and global history we want to thank you for preservation we thank you for healing for those that are sick. We thank you, Father, for taking away gradually the, the, the tide of the virus. And we thank you because all is well with our land. We speak healing over our lands, over our nation, and over the world at this very particular time. In the name of Jesus Christ. Open our eyes. Bless our hearts as we study your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I welcome you every one of us to um, today's Digging Deep service. Um, our topic this evening is a continuation of what um, Pastor George started um, a week ago. That is on the topic, distraction. And today, I will be talking about broken focus, distraction, broken focus, distraction, broken focus. My text my anchor text is Proverbs chapter 4, verse 25. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 25. It says, let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you. Let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight, be straight before you. Distraction, broken focus. Research has shown that three of the biggest challenges facing humanity today are one, time pressure. That is pressure caused by time. You don't have enough time. Time is never enough. How do I manage my time? That is one of the greatest pressures confronting humanity. The second is financial pressure. How do I get money to attend to my needs? How do I get money to attend to my children's needs? How do I pay my rent? How do I buy food to eat? Financial pressures. How do I take care of my family, take care of my parents? How do I take care of my loved ones and all of that? So we have time pressure. We have financial pressure. And of course, the third is the struggle to maintain a healthy balance between home and work. Whilst you have financial pressure and you have time pressure, the third pressure is the struggle. It's a struggle to maintain a balance, a healthy balance between your home and your work. Because sometimes one overlaps the other one 
places pressure on the other. So there are pressures everywhere in our life. Time pressures, financial pressures, and the struggle to balance all of these all around us. Now, remarkably, is the fact that in the midst of all these pressures of life, in the midst of all the pressures of life, there are different distractions. There are different distractions in our life. Different distractions. While we are trying to cope with the pressures of life, now there are different things that can distract us. Different distractions that has the possibility, that has the potentials, that has the capacity of stopping us from realizing our dreams, that can stop us from realizing our vision, that can stop us from realizing that or from attaining that which God has set for us. And some of these pressures are people. People can pressure you. Can it be your spouse? It can be your family. It can be your workplace. It can be your parents. It can be your neighbors. People can be a source of distraction. And I'm sure that's what Pastor spoke on. Then there's also offense. Offense can be a pressure. People take uh, offense to what people have done to you. That incapacitates you. That breaks you down. That stops you, fixates you for some time if you're not careful. Then there's also the distraction caused by fear. There's the distraction caused by fear. Fear of today. Fear of tomorrow. Fear of the future and all of that. Then there's also the distraction caused by double-mindedness. Are you sure? Is this thing possible? Am I taking the right decision? Am I in the right track? Am I on the right trade? Am I in the right profession? Am I even living in the right place? Am I doing the right thing? You are not sure. Am I even praying a right? Am I sure I've taken this decision? You know, this decision I've taken now, oh, I'm about to take, is it the right thing? You are not sure. So there's double mindedness. That also has the capacity to distract you in life if you are not very, very careful. And of course, there's also the, the distraction caused by comparison. When you measure your success in life by what happens to your friends, by what happens to your neighbors, you measure your success in life by the car that your neighbor has bought, you measure the success of your life by the house that your friend or your church, fellow church member has built, that could be a major distraction, comparison. The Bible says those who compare themselves by themselves are fools. They are not wise. But of course, my focus today is not on all of this. My focus today is a big distraction that can cost you, that can halt you, that can also cost you, you know, to, you know, not to attain your God-given potential. And that is broken focus. Broken focus. Now, what is focus? There seems to be some kind of um, misconception or misunderstanding about focus. Focus is not about what you can visualize physically. Because people think that focus is limited to what you can visualize. You just set your eyes on what you can see. That is not all about focus. That is not what focus is. Focus is about your inner self-concentration. And what your inner self, what your inner self concentrates on and what you fall in love with. What does your inner self concentrate on? What is your inner mind fixed on? What have you fallen in love with? That is focus. That is focus. Whatever your inner self falls in love with is where your passion lies. Wherever your inner self falls in love with is where your passion lies. When your focus becomes broken, when your focus becomes broken, it means that your love for that thing, your love for that person, your love for that relationship, your love for that project, your love for that cause, and the rest of them will shift. So, so that is what causes it. Now, when your love shifts, your prior, it affects your priorities in life. It affects your passion in life. When your love shifts, it affects your priorities and it affects your passion. 
Now, when your passion and your priority shifts, it does affect your commitments. It does affect your commitment. Now you can see you are talking about passion, priority, commitment. Now, what about your commitment? When your commitment moves, your interests, your pursuits in life, and your momentum in life will be affected. And ultimately, when in life, if someone or something alters your interest, your level of pursuit and your degree of momentum, it can affect your success or otherwise in life. In life, like we've said earlier, there are different things that are competing for your attention. There are many things competing for your attention. There are many things competing for your attention. And that's why our text says in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 25, let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1, Paul said, therefore, we must pay closer attention to what we have already heard, lest we drift away from it. We must pay closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. There are a lot of things you could focus on in life to make your life a success. But I want to identify four of them. Number one, you must focus on your strengths in life. You must do away with your weaknesses, Pay less attention to your weaknesses and build on your strength. Focus on your strengths and not on your weakness. Number two, you must focus on today. You must focus on today. Forget about yesterday. Forget about tomorrow. You cannot change the past. Neither can you control what happens tomorrow. But today is your day. This is your day. This is your chance. This is your opportunity. Make good use of today. Focus on today. Today is an opportunity. Today is a gift. And you must manage it and manage it well. Number three, you must focus on results. Results. Be results oriented. Be focused on outputs. Be focused on getting things done. Be focused on getting things done. I was privileged to work with some American lawyers. I've worked with British lawyers, Norwegian lawyers, and all of that. But I discovered something about American lawyers. They are very, very targets and results driven. Leave all the stories, leave all the grammar, results. Their eyes are on results. When once you can give them results, they will come for you. When once you can say, ah, people in life are always storytellers, talkers. But can you give results? Can you keep your eyes on the results? Can you be result-oriented? Number four, you must focus on your priorities. Focus, not everything in life matters. Not everything in life matters. It's not every journey you must undertake. It's not every friend that you must keep. It's not everybody that is your friend. It's not everybody that must go on a journey with you or support you. But you must, it's not everything that craves or that wants your attention that you must give your time and your attention to. So you must focus on your strengths, focus on today, focus on results, and focus on priorities. It doesn't matter how talented you are. It doesn't matter how beautiful or how handsome you are. It doesn't matter how gifted you are. If you lose your focus in life, you'll be like... A, how can I compare it? You'll be like an, like a, uh, um, be like an octopus on a roller coaster. There will be plenty of movements. Plenty of movements, no goals. Motion without movement. Movement without direction. You will be fixated and you will be stuck in life. So you must maintain the focus. You must keep your focus. You must keep your focus. Very, very important. Something happened in the course of the week. About a month ago, my wife was running for something, an election in the enemy. And I told her, I had to sit her down in the middle of the night. I said, look, listen, I'm going to support your goal with my money, with my time, with my everything. But look, getting elected into the executive committee of the Nigerian Medical Association is not the goal. 
your goal in Lutz is to be a resident doctor, to become a consultant. That is the goal. These ones are distractions. It is good for you to be part of the process. It is good to contribute your own quota to the development of your association. It is good for you to network with people, professors, consultants, and all of that. But that is not the goal. The goal is to become a consultant. So do not lose focus. I'm going to support you. I'm going to give you my time. I'm going to give you my money. But this is not the goal. So we must set our eyes on the goal. I am a goal getter. If I fix my mind on something, anything else matters. Nothing else matters. Every other thing becomes secondary. So we must keep, keep our eyes. Even the Bible says it. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. It means that there's a possibility for you to get distracted. You must. Failure and success can just be tied to just focus. When once you lose your focus, when once you lose your focus in life, there's a possibility that you are, you, there's a possibility that you can become a failure if you're not careful. When once you lose your focus in life, you break the momentum. You break your network. You break your connection. And that can, all, that can set you back for many years. So you have to be very, very, very careful. The Bible is filled with people who succeeded because they kept their eyes on the goal. And the Bible is also filled with stories of people who failed because of broken focus. I'll share some of them with you. Let me give you 10 of them. Number one, you have Eve. Eve sinned because she focused on the virtue of the fruit and not the virtue of the person who commanded her. Eve failed because of a broken focus. Number two, Samson died because of the beauty of Delilah rather than the beauty of the presence of God. He failed. Joseph's brothers also failed. Why? Because they focused on the color of, on the glory of another man's color or the color of another man's garment rather on, than on their own passions rather on, on their own commitments. Lord's wife failed because she focused on what she was giving up. She focused on this, the beauty, the enormity of what she was going to give up rather than the greatness of the God that has called her to rescue. The spies, the spies, you know them, who are sent to go and spy the land. They fail, some of them. Why? Because they focus on the strength and on the size of their enemy. Rather on, on the size, the greatness, and the majesty of their God. Aaron and Miriam had an issue with Moses. Why? Because they focus on the, the what I call the ignobility. Or they see what they think, the, 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 the littleness. Of being called to be sec to, to be to be to be second place. Rather, their eyes were fixed on Moses. Their eyes were fixed on Moses. They just thought, no, look, I have what it takes to become number one. Rather than to celebrate their God given position as second to Moses or as supporters to Moses. Number seven, Judas failed because of what he expected Jesus Christ. To do for him. Rather than the wonderful things that Jesus Christ had already done for him. Number eight. Demas. Demas. You know about Demas in the Bible? Demas failed because of superficial cheerleading of the world. Rather than the unique and blessed opportunity to have someone as remarkable as Paul, the apostle, as his mentor, as his coach for life. That was why he failed. He failed because he was given to the praise of men. He was given to the, the, the lip singing of men rather than concentrate on being, an, being a learner under the feet of Paul, the apostle. Martha was distracted in the Bible, number nine. What happened? She focused on her sister's choice 
She focused on her sister's choice of position rather than hers. She was concerned about the other person. She was concerned what, about what that decision somebody else has taken. What was her own decision? She left her own self and she was distracted. Number 10, the young rich ruler in the Bible failed because of the security, because he focused on the security of his riches. He was focused on the security of his own riches rather than the security of God's love for him. So, brethren, we must not lose our focus. We must not lose our focus. Jesus succeeded because he did not focus on the shame of the cross. He did not focus on the shame of the cross. But his eyes were on the glory of his future. And he is now seated at the right hand of God. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 puts it very, very clear. He says, looking unto Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. He had to enjoy it. He had to keep his eyes off the shame, despising the shame. In other words, another word for despise is to take his eyes off the shame. I am God. How can I become so low? No, he did not lose his focus. His eyes were not on the shame. His eyes were not just on the cross. His eyes was on the glory that is to come. And the Bible says, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. At the right hand of the throne of God. That is Jesus Christ. The founder and the perfecter of our faith. The founder and the perfecter of our faith. The Alpha and the Omega. He succeeded because he did not focus on the shame. He did not focus on the shame. But he focused on the glory. There is glory to come for you. There is plenty to come for you. Your tomorrow will be better than today for sure. Yes, the future is bright for you. The journey will be smooth for you. Yes, it's going to be well with the work of, of your hands. It doesn't matter the present struggles. It doesn't matter the present circumstances. Do not break your focus. Do not break your focus. Keep your eyes up. Keep looking unto Jesus. Keep looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith. Mind the things you focus on. I've talked about focusing on your strengths, focusing on today, focusing on getting the results, focusing on your priorities. Very, very important for you. And as I round up, I'll say this, that the best focus is looking unto Jesus. No one puts his hands on the plow. Luke chapter 9 verse 62 says, No one puts his hands on the plow and looks back. Is fit for the kingdom. No one puts his hands on the plow and looks back. Is fit for the kingdom of God. Keep your eyes up. Keep looking unto Jesus. Keep trusting him for strength. Keep Trusting him for enablement for your day's journey. Keep asking him, Lord, help me. Help me to keep focus. If you, are, if, you, if you are weak, ask him for strength. If you are weary, ask him to encourage you. If you are tired, ask him to help you. He is our helper. He is our strength. Because we must make it. The journey will be successful. The journey will be successful. We will land well. We will reach our destination by the grace of God. If we keep trusting him. If we keep believing in him. But keeping, do not break the focus. Do not break the focus. Looking unto Jesus. 
looking unto Jesus. And as I close, I will invite you, if you're here today, and you have been looking unto your father, you're looking unto your mother, looking unto your friends, looking unto your boyfriends and seeing partners, looking unto your sugar daddies and sugar mommies, looking up to people that cannot help you. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus. I invite you today to come to Jesus. I invite you today to accept him as the Lord and master of your life. And if you will, I would like to pray and lead you to him. Father, we thank you for your people. Thank you for those in their homes who are watching live and they want to look up unto you. They want you to be the focus of their being. Lord, I pray that you take them right now, even right now, by their hands. I pray that you hold them and accept them as yours. Because they are yours already. You made them in your image and in your likeness. I pray that you will embrace them. I pray that you wipe their the tears off their eyes. I pray you forgive their sins. I pray you write their names in the book of life. I pray that you shift their focus from darkness to light, from wrong to right. Yes, from failure to success. Yes, from obscurity to limelight. Lord, you change their story for good. Give them a new focus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. And Lord, I also pray for as many, even those who have given their lives to you, we are watching even right now, but I've lost the focus. They've lost it along the way. Lord, I pray that you will reshape them. I pray you will restore them. I pray you open their eyes. I pray you rekindle the fire again. I bless your name because you are a merciful God. I plead the blood of Jesus upon them. And I speak light. I speak direction. I speak focus to their journey. I speak peace to their life. I speak peace to their home. I speak health to every sick bodies. Yes, I speak courage to everyone that is discouraged and downcast and broken. Lord, let there be restoration of strength. Let there be restoration of glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for listening. I'd like to, uh, before, we sh before we close, I'd like to encourage you to uh, be, a part, be a part of what God is doing in this place. Be a giver. And we'd like to take our offerings uh, right now. Our account numbers, the church account numbers, is as can be seen on your screen. Our uh, GT Bank account number, Lily of the Valleys, the Naira accounts and the dollar account number is so uh, reflected on the screen. I'd like you to also know, let us take our offering very quickly. Father, we thank you for our offering, the offering of your people. Bless it, I pray, and enrich the source of these offerings to the glory of your name and for the blessing of your church. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. I also want to encourage you to be uh, part of our weekly activities, which remains um, largely unchanged. Our, last, our online services still continues. On Tuesday, uh, digging deep at 6 o'clock to 6.30, and uh, our faith clinic, 6 o'clock to 6.30. Both meetings on Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, will be live on the Zoom network. Uh, our Tuesday services will also be in, uh, on YouTube and Facebook. Tuesday, YouTube and Facebook. Um, other days, activities uh, are on Zoom. Strictly 20 minutes for a prayer service. 7 o'clock to 7.20 every day. I understand uh, the church is going to pass uh, an announcement as regards the opening of the church in compliance with the COVID-19 directive uh, issued by the government of Lagos State. So please stay tuned to all the platforms of the church 
um, whether it is email, whether it is by WhatsApp, uh, the various groups, uh, please, uh, and of course, um, be also invo involved in our Facebook and YouTube live streaming on the days that have been announced, Tuesdays and Sundays. Tuesdays and Sundays, the church will be live on Facebook and on YouTube uh, platform. Uh, God bless you. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for this evening service. We bless you for opening our eyes on the power of focus and to stay away from everything that can break our focus. Father, we bless your holy name. We pray that we will receive this word with meekness and fear. We pray that we will be able to uh, live with these things, to practice them so that we can be blessed, not just by hearing, but by doing them. Blessed be your holy name because we know you are good. We ask for your protection over every one of us, ourselves, our wives, our families, our children, our parents, our aged ones. Father, you bless and keep them. We pray for Lagos states. We pray for peace. We pray for tranquility. We pray for healing of the land. We pray for Nigeria. We pray for peace. We pray for restoration. We pray for healing of the land. We pray for global peace. We pray for global harmony. We pray for global unity in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Help us to keep our eyes up and our heads up to the glory of your name and for the blessing of your church. Thank you because you've answered our prayers. You're a merciful God. In Jesus' victorious name, we are prayed. Amen. Shall we share the grace and fellowship? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Have a good evening. God bless.